What you need to know about me is this. In eighth grade, I won the attendance award. <laughs> That's right. Never missed a day. That's because I'm never sick. I mean, in my house growing up, the only way you got out of going to school is if you had 101 plus fever, spots on your body, a bone poking out somewhere, and some combination of the three. That's right, I was healthy as a child. Some said too healthy, hence my nickname, Bubbles. As you can see, not much has changed since then. So illness, sickness, not really anything I was familiar with. But when I had the chance to exploit an illness for my own benefit, I took it. It was 1998, and I was heading to Iran to cover the new president, a moderate cleric who'd been overwhelmingly elected. It was an exciting time in Iran, lots of journalists coming in. For me, though, it wasn't about politics. This was going to be my introduction to global health and a disease I had never heard of nor could very well pronounce. Leishmaniasis. Ever heard of it? Uh huh. No. That's because, that's because countries where this disease is endemic are not the places we often travel to, like Iran. Now, traveling to Iran is quite a surreal experience, even on a good day, even before you get there. You're on the plane flying in from Dubai, and a plane load of Middle Eastern businessmen and well-to-do Iranians who are returning from a holiday abroad. The plane's starting to coast down. You're finishing your last drink. I'm finishing my last drink. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the announcement comes on the public address system. Ladies and gentlemen, we will soon be landing in Tehran. We want to remind you of the customs and traditions of the Islamic Republic and advise that you appoint yourself accordingly. In a moment, the overhead bins pop open. Carry-on luggage brought down. Bags opening, women pulling out clothes, all manner of clothes. Next thing I know, in seconds, whether you're wearing a short skirt or a Chanel suit, gone. Your hair, long locks, a fashionable bob, gone. All covered under long coats and a headscarf. Me, I preferred a long muslin sort of gray dress, my take on Islamic chic, and an embroidered black scarf to wrap around my head. When I arrived in Iran, you know, working as a journalist, journalists are pretty independent people. In Iran, as a journalist, you're never quite alone. The government is kind enough to appoint you an escort. <laughs> a minder. Who follows you pretty much everywhere you go, checking out where you're going, who you're talking to. And the per people you're talking to, the people you're interviewing, they're pretty sure the guy standing behind you is not your editor. They're paid to report upon you, to bring back to the Ministry of Information people you've talked to, the places you've been. And as a journalist, you never really feel sure you know what's real and what's not. But this trip was going to be my opportunity to give my minder the slip. Before I came, a Johns Hopkins public health professional had told me about a vaccine trial that was underway in the country. It was for a disfiguring parasitic disease transmitted by a sand fly that kills 20 to 50,000 people a year, leishmaniasis. And my host for that trip was a guy named Dr. Ali. He'd invited me to go to see the vaccine trials in the middle of the country. I couldn't wait. And since this was a personal invitation, I didn't feel any obligation to tell my minder. So one morning, I got up early, hopped in a cab, and went over to meet Dr. Ali at his office at the University of Tehran. We got in his battered up Toyota, 
and headed out for the four-hour journey. The trip along the way was pretty uneventful. Um, the landscape, sort of like New Mexico, kind of barren but beautiful, green in places. About two hours out, there were a series of low-rise buildings in front of us. And Dr. Ali explained that that was a small village that we were going to make a stop there. He had a package to, look, to deliver to one of his colleague's mothers. No sweat on me. I was there for the ride. As we got closer, that series of low-slung buildings took shape. Dome mud brick huts. That's what they looked like to me. In fact, it reminded me of um, Luke Skywalker's uh, ancestral home in Star Wars. Remember that kind of place? Anyway, we pull up. Dr. Ali hops out, takes the package, goes over to one of these small huts, knocks on the door. The door opens, and out steps an elderly woman, bent over like an inverted U. Hadn't seen anything like that before. Dr. Ali delivered the package, came back into the car, and before I could say a word, he says to me, Anna, people here don't have much exposure to calcium. Okay, I got it. Travel on, keep going, we're another two hours, and we hit these two villages where the vaccine trials are underway. Dr. Ali is warmly greeted, old men gladly pulling up their pant leg to show him these ulcerated, swollen ankles and calves. His colleagues, clinical officers at these clinics, talking very serious with, seriously with him about people who hadn't shown up for their second dose of the vaccine. What were they to do? Women, a din of women, crying, Salak, Salak, which I came to find out was the Farsi word for leishmaniasis. I'm taking copious notes. I'm asking a ton of questions. We finish at the health clinic, and I figure we're done. Dr. Ali says to me, we have one more stop to make. I say, OK. Get in the car, drive along for a few minutes or so. We pull up in front of a primary school, a girls' school. We enter the school. First person I meet, the principal, who begins to tell me about the three generations of women in her family who had leishmaniasis. The janitor jokes about the prevalence of the disease, telling me, if you don't have leishmaniasis, you're a bastard. <laughs> the nurse, the school nurse, happy to show me her scar. Scars, actually. All seven of them. Dr. Ali escorts me down the hallway, opens a classroom door, step in. There, sitting at their desks, are 35 young girls, 11, 12, year old, 12 years old, primly outfitted in their clean cotton smocks and their white head scarves. Dr. Ollie to Ann, Anna, don't you want to ask them some questions? I looked at him. Yes, I'm a reporter. I will ask some questions. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Who here knows? about leishmaniasis. Nearly every hand goes up. Anybody here know anyone who has that disease? Two thirds of the kids in the class raise their hand. What can you tell me about this disease? Silence. Dr. Ali in Farsi encourages them, don't be shy, don't be shy. And finally, one little girl slowly raises her hand. She stands up, and as she starts to speak in Farsi, Dr. Ali translates, if I get Salak, I will be ugly, and no one will marry me. And in that instant, I got it. I understood the impact of that disease on that little girl and her town. She was 12 years old. At that age, I was counting the days to get my perfect attendance record. <laughs> Not her. I stayed another week in Iran, uh, left to go back to Baltimore, where I worked for the Baltimore Sun. My story appeared in the newspaper. 
The vaccine trials really didn't pan out, but that's the way it goes. Um, global health, however, that was something I was interested in now. And when I left newspapering four years ago, I looked for an opportunity where I could work in the field. And luckily, I found it at a Johns Hopkins affiliate, yes, what goes around comes around, <laughs> called Jupaigo. So I'm back writing now, you know, about diseases I can't pronounce or not very well spell. Um, but I'm very proud to be a part of their mission because of the work they do. I'm still in touch with Dr. Ali. Um, there's no vaccine for leishmaniasis. Uh, as he rightly tells me, the countries where that disease are endemic have a lot of other problems. Wars, corruption, sanctions, and even though it's still killing 20 or 50,000 people a year, it's not a priority. You know, um, as a reporter, I got to travel to more than a dozen countries. And, um, but Iran was always special, different. I went back there at least three times. It was unforgettable. And when I talk about my trips there, I don't really talk much about the Persian carpets I bought or the sweet tea or the confrontation I had with the morals police. Didn't tuck my hair in enough. I talk about that little girl. You know, like I said, at her age, I was getting ready to pick up my attendance award. For her, missing a day of school wasn't her concern. She was worried about missing out on life. Thanks very much.